Yes, it was a long day, but what was to follow made it seem a lot more bearable. And now down to the stage with Bob Stern. Test. Wow, look at all these Test. people Test. here. Look at all Test. these people here. Lots of money. Our next performer of the afternoon has a concert in Oklahoma City tonight. And he has taken time out from his busy schedule to be here uh, with us this afternoon. He's been in Champaign-Urbana before. Been on WPGU Live twice. Let's have a welcome for Harry Chapin. As usual, at most Harry Chapin concerts, he received a standing ovation for every single song he did. He also received a standing ovation from a certain group of radio people that were very, very grateful. Yes, we were honored, and from the crowd's response that you heard, they enjoyed it too. That as always, Chapin likes to get everybody involved in his concerts. Okay, now wait a second. Guys, up in the light booth, whoever's up there, who sang louder, the women or the men? Do you want another chance? Okay, guys, you go first. M men first, then ladies. Okay, one, two, a uh, one, two, three. That's After Harry had left Champaign, the radio station and everybody in the gym was talking about the afternoon's happenings. It was a highlight of the weekend, and probably the biggest highlight since the first marathon. Speaking of highlights, sometimes a band shows up late, and the jocks must talk on endlessly, sometime for an hour or more, coming up with such witticisms as... Yes, indeed. Welcome back to the Bill Ackerman, Mark Rubin, or Mark Rubin, Bill Ackerman, Babelathon, here at the Danceathon. Or sometimes a glowing description of the action that is going on. Beach balls uh, fly around all over the place, and of course you see frisbees hitting people on the head, because the frisbees tend to go to the people that didn't know that they were coming. As the weekend goes on and the news people feel that they have interviewed everybody, sometimes they could surprise you with one of these. Hello once again, here on the north side of the Huff Gymnasium complex. There's got to be a very important activity, and that's filling all of our stomachs. And as part of a concession stand, I was hoping perhaps to get some of the typical concession stand noise, but seeing as how the lights have just been turned off here at the Hub Gymnasium Complex, most of the crowd has already gotten their concessions. They've gone up to the stage. Nonetheless, you people have been working here, no doubt, for a number of hours. I know because I've come here for my own hot dogs and have observed you here. Is this your first year here? No, this is my second. And what motivates you to get into this kind of volunteer work? Well, I'm the head of concessions in the house, helped me out, so I got involved in it. And, Unless you have a big stomach. Uh, yeah, a big stomach too helps out. Also, uh, making hot dogs is a lot of fun. You know, it's a good, good time. Uh-huh. And uh, your name is? Pam Grimmel. Now, Pam, is this your first year? No, this is my second. Oh, you, you, you were smiling so widely. I, I thought perhaps the novelty of it all just might have made it your first year. Coming right here is a person wanting a Coke. On live air, why do you want to go? Because I'm thirsty. Yeah. Well, that's the way it is here at the concession stand. Al Ludell, back to the booth and all your hot dogs. 
Yeah, and uh, speaking of hot dogs, if there's any hot dogs left over when the marathon ends, uh, Al Nudel is going to wear them all. When the band finally does arrive and the jock is all talked out, he breathes a sigh of relief and a clever statement is in order. I do want to uh, congratulate the Cry and Shame's equipment truck for making it here this evening after uh, an extended tour of Champaign-Urbana. The PGU people got a big kick out of seeing the Cry and Shame's because it was in the middle 60s when most of PGU staff was being weaned on rock and roll that the shames were big stuff. A lot of nostalgia took place for a lot of people on Sunday night. The first time I saw this band was about 1965 up in Chicago. They've been together a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the Crying Shames. It wasn't much longer after Shames finished their set that the 52nd hour of the marathon had elapsed. $74,000 had been raised, which raised the spirits of 150 PGU staff members. A sense of exhaustion but accomplishment was felt by all because they had just pulled off one of the most unique radio broadcasting events in history. The radio people gathered in the green room, the room reserved for interviews and basic relaxation during the weekend, to celebrate the end of the marathon on the air. And it was on the air that marathon producer Stu Olson summed up what he thought was the total makeup of the weekend. It all comes down finally in the end to reading and research, cotton in the ears, warm orange juice, some hopes and fears, thundering music, smoke-filled rooms, cups and litter, mops and brooms, glaring lights and a throbbing head, silent streets and unmade bed, <laughs> unselfish smiles, hearts that care, one dollar donations, wealth to share, a lit up tote board and a new total to give, an eight-year-old child and a new life to live. This is Stu Olson on behalf of the entire 1976 WPG Marathon staff, signing off from Huff Jim till next year, returning you now to our studios. And I'm Bob Stern. You've been listening to In-Depth. They shoot disc jockeys, don't they?